topic ADCs for wireless applications as we move towards software defined radios SDRs there is a growing need to have ADCs mainly because it much easier to handle digitized data since it can be programmed to the software wireless standard ADCs can be implemented in various ways but Delta Sigma ADCs have some inherent advantages since they are more mathematically complex but easier to implement as circuits since they have a high level of digital components. Introduction Analyzing Sigma Delta ADCs Sigma Delta SD analog to digital converters are critical components in wireless transceivers. This study shows that a continuous time, single loop, Single bit SD ADC is suitable for wireless applications demanding less than 5 mHz conversion bandwidth such as GSM Bluetooth, WCDM maze. On the other hand, for applications that require bandwidth conversion higher than 5 mHz such as WLA and the use of a CD single loop, multi-bit SD ADC is recommended. In wireless systems, the desired channel must be selected in the presence of strong adjacent channel interference. This requires wideband analog to digital converters ADC that can digitize both the desired and adjacent channel interference, resulting in high dynamic range doctor requirements. Meanwhile, the advances in the CMOS process, combined with its economical advantages, is driving the integration of a complete wireless transceiver in baseline CMOS. The demand for greater throughput leads to digital modulation schemes of greater complexity combined with a greater signal band. As a result, there is a strong trend to digitize wideband receivers. In this perspective, oversampled SD ADC modulators are suitable because the adjacent channel interference fall into the same band as the shaped quantization noise figure 1. Then, the same digital filter filters out both the quantization noise and interference. Furthermore, SD ADCs provide an effective way to implement high-resolution ADCs without stringent matching requirements or calibration. The block diagram of a SD ADC is shown in Figure 2. Basically, the digital output of the modulator contains the representation of the input signal plus a quantization noise that is shaped so that the noise is small in the band of interest and large elsewhere. To gain more insight into the choice of a suitable SD ADC topology for a specific application, was surveyed and analyzed through publications. All selected publications related to SD ADCs are based on measurement results and not on simulation. The former discussion is based on single loop and cascaded loop analysis, multi bits and single bit usage, as well as continuous, time and discrete time SD loop filter implementation. The common figure of merit FOM used to compare ADC design is calculated according to the formula power FOM equals ENOB equals 1 2 signal band, where ENOB is the effective number of bits, calculated according to the peak signal PA noise and distortion ratio SNPR SNPR negative 176, the NOB equals decibels peak. To 602, the FOM is expressed in picojoules per conversion PJ flash convention. The power number specified in the publications is questionable. Sometimes the paper includes reference source, onboard oscillator and biasing circuitry in addition to the SV80C's core. This can be inaccurate. But because the SD ADC's power core is usually the dominant factor, the inaccuracy is believed to be small and will not significantly corrupt the FOM. As illustrated in Figure 3, since 2003 there has been a trend to increase the bandwidth conversion. The main reason is the emergence of more signal band, demanding wireless standards such as IEEE 802.11. Despite the increase of conversion bandwidth, the FOM remains between 1 and 10 PJ flash convention. Thus, according to equation 1, the power consumption has been scaled down as well. The increase of conversion bandwidth and the decrease of power are two contradictory design targets. The simultaneous fulfillment of these two targets is a result of advances in process technology and circuit topologies. In addition, figure 3 shows that when the signal band is smaller than 10 mHz, then the SD modulator's FOM is limited by circuit noise while it is mainly dominated by the technology performances when the signal band is larger than 10 MHz typically, the sample frequency is limited to hundreds of MHz for reasonable achievement and power consumption consideration in CMOS technologies. Consequently, as illustrated in Figure 4, an oversampling ratio OSR between 40 and 50 is acceptable for low GSM and moderate Bluetooth and WCDMA bandwidth applications. However, for more demanding bandwidth applications such as WLAN, the OSR is typically lower than 10. 
the ADC resolution at a low OSR can be improved by using a higher order loop filter, and slash or by increasing the internal quantizer resolution. For single bit, single loop modulators, the integrator's gain must be reduced to preserve the loop stability. Therefore, simply increasing the loop filter order at a low OSR will result in a poor SNR improvement. To achieve high resolution at a low OSR multibits internal quantization is widely used as illustrated in Figure 5. Since multibit quantizers have a more linear gain than single bit quantizers, the stability of multibit single loop SD modulators is significantly improved. As a result, more aggressive noise transfer function can be designed, with the benefit of extra dynamic range for every additional bits n of n drive 20. log 10 to 1 decibels each. 3. Alternatively, increasing quantizer resolution enables us to use a lower noise shaping filter for a given OSR. Unfortunately, it is necessary to double the number of comparators for each additional bit of quantizer resolution. Obviously, this costs silicon area as well as power dissipation and thus degrades the FOM for a given resolution as illustrated in Figure 6. In addition, multi-bit SD ADCs are sensitive to non-idealities such as mismatch in the feedback digital to analog converter DAC as these errors are added directly to the input signal and are thus not noise shaped. Nevertheless, deep submicron technologies feature excellent matching characteristic as high as 11 bits or 12 bits of resolution. Hence. Careful layout and design can fulfill linearity requirements of an internal feedback DAC, provided that the SDADC is lower than 12-bit resolution, which is typically the case for WCDM maze. For a SDADC's resolution that exceeds the matching possibilities of CMOS or BCMOS, this problem must be addressed. The solution consists of using dynamic element matching DEM. DEM converts the DAC element errors to high frequency noise, thereby Highly linear oversampling DACs can be built with only moderate matching requirements for the DAC element. DEM techniques have been developed since 1998, starting with randomization of the DAC elements. The methods are continuously improved with respect to implementation efficiency and order of shaping. Since the presentation of in 1995 and the disclosure of the ADC design in 1997, these techniques have been well established in the Sigma Delta design community allowing efficient and robust implementation of Sigma Delta ADCs with resolution of more than 14 bits and bandwidth beyond 1 MHz. The digital complexity introduced by DEM, and more precisely the area and the power consumption penalty is not believed significant since the mainstream CMOS process area is shrunk by element 2, i.e. 50% every 3 years. In addition, the power consumption in digital CMOS circuits scales with the square of the supply voltage that roughly decreases by 20% at each technology node. As a result, the superior drive performances at a low OS are made multi-bit SD modulators attractive for WLAN applications. Consequently, it is not surprising that multi-bit design represented 78% of the published SD modulators see Figure 7. However, a detailed look at Figures 5 and 6 shows that single bit should be preferred to multi-bit SD ADCs when the conversion bandwidth is lower than 5 mHz GSM, Bluetooth, WCDMA because they achieved better airflow M and are less silicon area consuming. Continuous time versus discrete time is illustrated in Figure 8. In an SD modulator loop, it is possible to build up the noise shaping filter as a discrete time DB or a continuous time CD circuit. DVSD modulators are implemented using switched capacitor SC circuit techniques. In FC circuits, amplifiers with high gain, bandwidth product GBW satisfy the settling requirements. Typically, the GBW is 7 times higher than the sampling frequency. By nature, CDSD modulators are not sensitive to settling behavior. As a result, CDSD modulators can potentially operate at higher clock frequency and slash or with less power consumption. Note that in a CDSD modulator, the loop filter provides additional anti-aliasing filtering, which is beneficial when having to handle large interference. In FC circuits, the in-band noise is bounded by the capacitor size. Consequently, and as illustrated in Figure 9, CT modulators have smaller FOM and are less silicon area consuming than DB counterparts. Contrary to a CT modulator, in a DT modulator, large glitches appear time constant of the SCDAC8 times smaller than the clock period enables the decrease of jitter sensitivity by 4 decibels. 
This latter solution is preferred for wireless applications that do not require